What's up everybody? This is Mike. Merry Christmas everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic Christmas. Best wishes to you and your families, your loved ones. I hope you're having a blast and you have received all the gifts that you have been waiting for and you are really, really doing well. In today's video, I am in a pretty good mood and I decided to record this video for you so I can give you a complete walkthrough of the DJI Mimo app. The DJI Mimo app is the app that DJI released specifically for this DJI Osmo Pocket, the brand new pocket camera that I'm currently giving away. If you're interested, you can find a link to the giveaway in the description. But if you have just received the Osmo Pocket as a gift, you have bought it for yourself or you just want to see how the app looks like, this is the video for you because we will go through all the menus, all the settings and I'll just give you a very quick uh, insight of what these settings do for you, how to use them and whether it's worth using them or not. So without any further ado, let's jump to the DJI Mimo app. Okay, so this is what you're going to see once you open the DJI Mimo app. This is the home screen and there are quite a lot of different settings to go through so I will try to be quick. Let's start off with the home icon which are, you're going to see on the top left corner of the app and that is where you can watch some product tutorials by DJI to get to know your Osmo Pocket a bit better. You can uh, register here with your DJI account. You can set it up and uh, just tweak a couple of settings for your DJI account. I'm not going to talk about it too much because it's all personal, uh, but also next to the home icon, you're going to see uh, the current percentage of your DJI Osmo Pocket. I have 75% left. Uh, you are going to see the SD card indicator that shows that currently there is an SD card inside the device and also the current capacity of your SD card. Next on the bottom below the home icon you're going to see the gimbal settings and the gimbal settings are quite easy to remember. First of all you have a fast or slow follow and those are really cool to have, especially if you're following something that moves very quickly. If you go to fast follow, the camera reacts to your movement a lot faster, of course. And if you go to slow, it's a bit buttery, a bit more buttery, a bit, uh, you know, natural looking. So those are the two settings that you can change. And then you have the gimbal settings that um, keep the tilt locked. So for example, if the, the tilt is locked now, if I go down, it will keep uh, the, the camera pointed towards the object that I'm following with my gimbal no matter where I go. But if I choose to go to FPV mode, for example, now no matter where I turn the camera to, it will follow just like FPV. And I quite like that for some shots, it's really cool to have. The next option is called follow and in follow mode, everything is buttery smooth and very cool. Uh, if you go down or up, the camera will just follow your movement. The next icon we have is this little camera here. Uh, and when you tap on it, you have the choice between manual and automatic settings for your camera. So as you can see, I'm currently set to shoot everything in auto and the device picks those values for me. But if you choose to switch to manual, you press on the M and now you have the option to choose your ISO and shutter speed. This is quite handy to have, but for this demonstration, I will of course, uh, move back to auto so you can see the screen much better. Next we have all those different resolution and uh, frames per second settings uh, and as you can see we have 1080p or a 4k option. I have set mine to 4k and uh, of course you can select your video frame rate 24, 25, 30, 48, 50 or 60 frames per second in 4k. Next the quality is uh, set to fine because unfortunately, if you want to shoot in super fine, you can only shoot in 24 frames per second. And even if you do that, you get this tip that says that shooting super fine video may cause the camera to heat up. But spoiler alert, it is going to heat up regardless of which resolution and frame, frames per second setting you choose because it just overheats too much. But that's what you have to deal with, I guess, if you want to use this camera. So uh, if you want to shoot in 4K 60, if you, if you choose the 60 option, it will immediately go back to fine instead of super fine. So for now, I will stay at 4K at 30 frames per second. 
Next, we have those three little dots here that uh, once you tap on them, you have quite a lot of different settings for your video. And uh, you're going to notice that we have basic or pro um, choices. So first I will show you what basic does. So when you tap on basic, you have just a couple of options. So we have your video format, uh, MOV or MP4, I use MOV. You have anti-flicker settings, 50 or 60 Hertz. I've set mine to 50 and you have the option to turn on your grid lines or even the grid lines plus the diagonal lines, which uh, gets quite messy on your screen. So I will keep that off for now, but it's useful to have that because sometimes you want to line up your shot properly and uh, that's the best way to do it. You have your overexposed feature uh, turned on or off from here. And as you can see, if I go here to my lamp, you're going to see that that zebra pattern that shows me that uh, this light is overexposed. It's quite handy to have. For now, I will switch it off. And now if you go to the pro tab, you have more tweaks. So you have your white balance, you can choose your white balance yourself, you can set it to custom or auto. But it's nice to have the custom uh, options. So you can choose yourself. Uh, but for now, I will set mine to auto. You have you have the volume amplification level, which to be honest, I haven't tested that thoroughly yet. So for now, I set mine to auto, but you can have the low, moderate or high. You have the noise reduction option. So if you're shooting at night, it's nice to have the noise reduction setting turned on. And the same grid option overexposed. You can turn on your histogram, which is quite handy to have. And just like on the DJI drones, you can move it anywhere on the screen you want. And uh, for now, I will keep that on. And you have the focus mode, uh, which is either autofocus continuous or autofocus single. I've never had any issues with my autofocus uh, so far. So I keep mine to autofocus continuous. The next icon which are going you're going to see are some gimbal settings. Uh, you can turn on your gimbal easy control from here or you can calibrate your gimbal in case you're experiencing some issues with your gimbal. This is where you can calibrate it from. And finally, we have some general information which shows your firmware version here, your SD card capacity. And you can also format your SD card from here, from this little button here. In the middle of the screen, you can see your current shutter speed, your ISO and your exposure value. And that's quite nice to have. It's very cool to see your uh, quick information on the screen. You have the joystick, which I really love uh, because you can easily switch uh, your orientation of the camera to, to go up, down, left or right with a just simple slide on the gimbal and it's nice on the on the joystick i'm sorry and it's nice to have it because you don't have a joystick on the device itself so having a joystick even if it's a virtual joystick is great next you have the play button which shows all of your uh, current files on the on the osmo pocket in the sd card then you have the histogram which i'm going to move a bit to the left so uh, it doesn't really bother us you have the record button for sure. You, you need that to start recording. And uh, let me just move the gimbal a bit down so I can show you. This is the recenter button. As soon as you tap on it, it's going to recenter to the center. So it's nice to have this uh, recenter button on the screen so you can easily recenter anytime you want. And finally, you have this little icon to move the camera so it points towards you. Right now it's a bit dark, so it doesn't really detect me. Uh, but um, if I go down a bit, yeah, it's too dark, so it won't detect my face, but generally it should start tracking your face. So apologies for the bad lighting, but uh, it should be uh, tracking you automatically once you switch it to your towards your face. And those are the regular settings that you have, but you also have a couple of different shooting modes, which we're going to get to right now. So as you can see, we're currently set to shoot a video. But if I slide, I can go to photo or pano. Let's start with pano actually, um, because we have a couple of different settings here. So the new thing we are going to see is just below the camera settings, we have two types of panoramas. So now we have set to 180 degree panorama, which is which just makes one huge panorama. Or you can choose this three by three, uh, panorama which takes 
nine photos and stitches them automatically for you and saves it to uh, saves the panorama to your device. So here is where you can choose your different panoramas. And if you go to the camera settings, you, you are going to see that you have the same things that we had for video. So auto or manual settings, you can choose here. Uh, also, if you tap on those three little dots again, you have different options now. So instead of uh, your video options, now you have some pano options. So you have the photo format, you can choose to be just JPEG or JPEG plus RAW. I have set that uh, to be JPEG plus RAW because sometimes I want to edit my RAW files in Lightroom. You have the white balance again. You have anti-flicker, grid, overexposed, histogram and focus mode. That's basically the same as in video. The gimbal settings are also the same and that's the general information. Again, the same. When you slide to photo, you have the timer here which allows you to take timed photos. Uh, you have the options between three, five or seven seconds. Again, the camera settings are the same. The gimbal settings are the same. Everything is the same as in panel mode. But here you can also turn on your glamour effects, which I don't really like. I hate that effect. Uh, and of course, I've set mine to off. But if you want to shoot somebody, somebody's face and you want to use the glamour effect that smoothens the skin, you can turn that to from here to low or moderate or high. I suggest you keep that to off. And that's it for photos. You can, of course, take a nice photo, which I will do right now. And that's it. We have the photo. Uh, now let's go to slow motion. If you go to slow motion mode, you're going to see how much this crops in. And it's crazy how much cropped in the footage becomes. Uh, but I, and I don't really like that. Also, the quality is not that good, so I wouldn't really advise you to shoot uh, slow motion unless you really want something uh, to be super slow down because that's where you're using 120 frames per second footage. So you don't really have any options here that are uh, specific for the slow motion. As you can see, we have slow motion. Uh, written here, but nothing really to, to change that is going to affect the footage that much. And finally, we have the time lapse option. We're back to regular, not so cropped in footage. And in the time lapse, let me just close this histogram because it bothers me a bit. In the time lapse option, you have this uh, tab here on the top of the screen where if you tap on this little arrow, you're going to see some interval settings. So that means how often your device is going to take photos. And I always use mine to the least amount of seconds. So three seconds and the duration is going to be uh, five minutes from between five minutes or uh, five hours. That's crazy. If you set your uh, Osmo Pocket to charge and uh, you have quite a lot of battery life, you can set this to a different, more uh, longer value so the duration will be longer and as you can see uh, a interval of three seconds for let's say 20 minutes is going to give you a total um, time lapse of 13 seconds so depending on the duration you choose and your interval you will see the final result how long your time lapse will be so let's say i want to capture uh, a five minute time lapse is going to give me three seconds of final footage so this is where you can calculate how much you need and uh, tweak it from there. If you tap on path, this is where it gets interesting because you can set different points. So it, so the time lapse starts from one point and ends in another point. And I really like that feature. So let's just say I want to start my time lapse from here. I move my camera, press the plus button and it saves this point. So I move it to the ceiling and press plus again. And that means that the time lapse will start from point A and will finish in point B. And the camera will move very smoothly towards uh, from, from one point to another. And it will do the, the moving time lapse, basically. I really love the moving time lapse feature. And uh, of course, there is no point of making a time lapse here in my room. So I will show you a moving time lapse on the screen that I captured recently. Really love the end result. And especially if you have more time to do a longer time lapse, it could be some breathtaking 
uh, result in the end. And those are pretty much all the settings for your Osmo Pocket in the DJI Mimo app. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it wasn't too long. And there we have it guys. This is the DJI Mimo app for the brand new DJI Osmo Pocket. Hopefully you have enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for tuning in on Christmas. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and drop a like on this video for showing support for me dropping a video on Christmas day. This is my first time ever, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That being said, thanks again and I'll see you very, very soon in my next one. Ciao.